Uh, let's get to our guest here. I hope he's still on the line. But Harm, you were on a rant there and I couldn't stop you. Brandon's joining us now. Play-by-play -play voice of the Abbotsford Canucks. And he got one of those towels behind him. I wanted to sneak one of those home uh, on the game on Wednesday. Brandon, how was Wednesday for you to experience from the play-by-play -play booth? It was awesome. Uh, we've seen some uh, solid crowds uh, at, uh, many times this year, but uh, Wednesday was a different level. I mean, I got chills when that kid was out at center before the team came out and he put the stick or the towel on the stick like Roger Nielsen. And it yeah. was all dark in the crowd and there's a spotlight on him. I literally got ch uh, chills looking at that. <laughs> and then just seeing just like the fans waving around before they came out. I'm getting chills in my leg right now. Just thinking about <laughs> towel power. So um, it, it, it was a it great was. atmosphere and uh, just glad that um, the boys were able to, to pull off a big win. Most definitely. I think the atmosphere was my biggest takeaway. It was playoff hockey. We see it on TV every night on Sports Center or whatever it may be. You can see the highlights. You see the crowds. You got to experience it out in Abbotsford. If you were out there at the Abbotsford Center, you got to experience, like you said, the towels, everything. It just, I, I loved the atmosphere out here on Wednesday. I expect it to be even better tonight out on Friday. And with a chance to win this series, what do you think this Abbotsford team is going to do in the opening here? Because it felt like last, on Wednesday there, that first period wasn't great hockey. That was a, a very much feeling out the playoff atmosphere. I'm expecting it to be a lot different here on Friday. What do you expect tonight from Abbotsford as they come out and look to put this, you know, put this thing to sleep and do what Bakersfield did to them last year? Yeah, that first period, Fabry, you're right, was a little bit sleepy to say the least. I guess it was like a feeling out process, like a heavyweight bout, seeing who's going to flinch first. Mm -hmm. Um, and Coach Carlton said, like, one of the big messages he's been preaching all week is to manage your emotions. And when you step out on that ice, sometimes you can be a little too ramped up and then you're not mm -hmm. playing your game. Next thing you know, you're maybe playing behind the eight ball. So um, that disallowed goal early on in the first period, I think, went a long way that the, the entire team and the fans can take a little bit of a breath and, and kind of reset. Um, and tonight's going to be even more loud. Uh, I'm hearing the word sellout. Uh, don't yep. quote me on it, but it's trending in that direction. If you want to get tickets to the door, you may be SOL. Um, so it's going to be an unreal uh, crowd again tonight, and um, I'm sure they'll they'll feed off it uh, just like they did on Wednesday. Brandon, I wanted to ask you about Spencer Martin in Game 1. He didn't get a ton of action just because Abbotsford defended so well and, and sort of made things easier on him, but still putting up a, a shutout. He looked sharp. Rebound control was... Um, was awesome to see what's it been like to see his game at like since since he was sent down has he been able to sort of really rebuild the confidence and and what are you seeing out uh, out of him uh, out of him these days well here's the thing harm i've asked him a couple of times now about his confidence and he said he never lost it when he got sent down which kind of surprised me because when you get assigned to ahl that's a tough pill to swallow and you can kind of just get the all bent out of shape but he said he never lost his confidence. He just kind of got some bad breaks. Um, and coming down and joining Abbotsford was a, a chance for him to kind of reset, be in an atmosphere that he was used to last year when he had an unbelievable season earning that NHL contract. Um, and being around someone like Marco Terranius, this guy is the team's secret weapon, uh, the goaltending coach. Look at the job he's done with Delia, who finished up in Vancouver. Seelovs has taken a massive jump in his development. And then Martin is rebuilt again. Uh, he's an NHL goaltender right now, playing at an elite level. And I, I was listening to Kevin Woodley, um, and he had made some great points uh, on the radio that he's looking a lot less busy in the crease, uh, which can kind of settle a goaltender tenor down. He, he's seeing the ice, seeing the puck. It's almost like a beach ball right now. And a lot of credit is to the defense and forwards doing a good job in front of him. He will admit that himself. But right now, he's, he's just on top of his game. Um, he's really like a, a calming presence back there when things maybe get a bit frantic. We saw it a couple times, Faber. Uh, in, in game one, there's some solid zone time from Bakersfield. They're trying to throw pucks on net, and he just kind of steering them to the corner, making sure that a teammate can pick it up. And uh, he's just been uh, awesome since joining the team, and all the credit to him. Yeah, you be careful. Because that saying Woodley on this show is like saying Voldemort. You can't – that doesn't fly here. We don't do that goalie <laughs> stuff. Uh, I'm curious, because of the goaltending situation, they go with the veteran, and we talked about it on yesterday's show. There's still development in Spencer Martin's game. He needs to develop back into being an NHL goaltender. I, th I think they probably have expectations for him to back up at the NHL level. But, hey, if things slip at all, you got the team MVP potentially coming in after in Arthur Silovs. How good are you thinking this team is feeling right now about their goaltending and just having two guys that, hey, as soon as there's a slip, the other guy is probably chomping out of the bit. I mean, Carlton said it on, on Wednesday. 
he, he, he's saying like, this isn't the best situation for these guys, but it's getting the best out of them because they're both playing in a little bit of a competition here. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll, we'll hear from Spencer on the broadcast tonight. I talked to him after Wednesday and uh, he, he's not sure if he's going to get the start. He doesn't know the program or the schedule. Um, he's obviously said he's in a competition, but it's a friendly competition. Him and Arthur's have a lot of respect for each other. Um, and I went to bed last night thinking C Lobs is going to start. Um, just because they've been alternating goaltenders since early March. The last time one of the two started consecutive games was March 4th and 7th. After that, it's just been an open door, one after another. And for good reason, because they haven't given Coach Carlton a reason to start one guy more than the other. Like, it's just been like the same level of elite goaltending game after game for the last, like, five, six weeks now. And I expected Martin to get the game one start because Seelaw's played on Saturday against Calgary. And sure yeah, enough, Martin gets in there, gets the shutout. And I was thinking no matter what, Seelaw's is probably going to start tonight. But after digging more into it, uh, my gut's telling me I'm not going to take it to the bank, but I'm going to write the check that Spencer Martin is starting tonight um, and maybe cash it around warm-up. We'll see. But I don't know. I don't know how you can't start Martin. He's only allowed 11 goals in his last eight starts. Like, that is pretty, pretty tidy. So... At the end of the day, you're right, Faber. If it is C-Lobs, I don't think the team cares. They can throw in anyone they want. They have confidence in both of them. One of the other standout players from, from game one was just watching Christian Wallander break the puck out um, and seeing him absolutely crush uh, four checkers, leave him in the dust. Um, it's it's actually kind of jarring to see the um, like how much he stands out relative to other defensemen and other players uh, at the AHL level. Uh, has it been that way the entire season? Obviously, he was, I think, recognized for HL Defenseman of the Year, so definitely seems that way. And how confident are you that, for example, we we got to saw him for a little bit here in Vancouver, and, and he acclimated himself really well. Um, how confident are you that he can be the real deal, even at the NHL level moving forward, just based off of um, how much better he's been than the rest of the competition um, in the AHL? I'm glad you brought that up, Harm, because before Game 1, like him and Juleson were coming in. They haven't played in almost about a month, right? And they got to ramp back up into a playoff-style atmosphere. That's got to be tough, even for a seasoned professional. And after the game, I was sitting in my car. I'm like, what Will Lannon did wasn't like something you'll ju jump off the stat page. But he made it look so easy back there. And that was his first game in almost a month. It's just I just marvel at his brain and the way it operates. Because just when it looks like he's in trouble, he's just going to saw someone across the ice. That was deep partners wide open. I didn't see that wait, there's someone at center, a little stretch pass behind the defense. It's always just on the money, and it's his hockey IQ that separates him from the rest. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the most physical, but what wins the battle is up here, and he has that factor that not a lot of guys have. Um, obviously, his playmaking ability, ability is elite as well. I remember at one point in the game, I was thinking, oh, well, Lana hasn't gotten his assist yet. Sure enough, he sets up Rathbone on the power play goal, just sends it over. Easy little pass, primary assist, so... Um, I, I honestly think his days in this league are numbered. He's an NHL-style defenseman, and I can see him with the right opportunity putting up 50 points in the NHL. He is that good, and I can't wait to see him put on another clinic tonight. He's just like, take it to the bank, reliable, plays a ton, digs in the corners, and the best thing about Will Annan is that he makes his partners and teammates around him better.